In our previous video, we talked about the stage, the physical process of birthing our baby, okay? So the baby's now here. We're going to do some delayed cord clamping. So we're not going to rush to cut the cord. And the reason for this is, is that we understand that the blood in the cord and the placenta actually is baby's blood and belongs to them. So it's beneficial for that to, to come back. So by not rushing to cut the cord, the baby is going to get that back. And the evidence suggests that it helps the baby increase their iron stores till near six months of age by having received that back. And six months would be the age when you then start to wean your baby. So delayed cord clamping, however your baby is born, be it water birth, vaginal birth, with an instrumental birth or by cesarean, we will still do some delayed cord clamping because we know that that's best for baby. We then have the placenta to deliver, okay? So the placenta is soft and squidgy, okay? It's not bony like baby's head. So it's going to take much less time to deliver than baby. You can deliver your placenta in two different ways and I'll explain your options to you in this video. You can choose to have what we call a natural or a physiological delivery of your placenta. In this delivery of placenta, what we would do is wait for the cord to stop pulsating altogether. At that point, we would clamp and cut the cord. However you choose to deliver your placenta, have a think in your birth preferences if um, your birth partner would like to um, cut the cord or if your birth partner doesn't want to cut the cord, then sometimes mum likes to cut the cord. If, we, um, if your preference is to do it yourself, there will literally be two clamps here with the midwife's fingers either side and we'll say, cut between my fingers. We don't go off and make a cup of tea and let you get on with it, okay? So you're not gonna make a mistake or, or cut the wrong thing off. It's literally cut between there. And it's quite a nice thing for you to enjoy doing. So with the natural delivery of the placenta, once the cord has been cut, then the placenta is going to fall down from the wall of the uterus and down, 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 and then enter the vagina. And mum is likely to feel some pressure there, perhaps like she wants to push again. And she would then deliver the placenta just by giving some gentle um, pushes down. Gravity really aids this as well. So we'd probably encourage mum to be in an upright position. This process could take up to an hour and that's quite normal for a natural delivery of placenta. Why would you choose to have this? Well, it could be that actually you've used no medication, no drugs, you cope beautifully with um, just your breathing and being calm and relaxed, or maybe you've used the pool during birth. And now actually, why would I want a drug to deliver my placenta? I'd rather just do it all by myself. So that might be why you want to have a natural delivery of the placenta. The other way we can deliver the placenta is by an active management. And in an active management, as the baby's born, we will still do some delayed cord clamping, okay? We would then give an injection into the muscle in the top of your thigh, or if you happen to have a cannula in for any reason, we could maybe give the medication down there. This is um, a large dose of oxytocin, so the labor hormone, and it's a synthetic version called syntocinon, or sometimes we give a drip, drug called Sintometrin, which has got a slightly different medication as well. What the injection does is cause the uterus to contract and helps the placenta to separate. And it will then fall away from the um, top of the womb and be ready to deliver. Now it's a bit more technical than this, but to put it into simple words, we would then do the work for you and pull the placenta out. The midwife will want to pop um, a hand on your tummy to check that we're ready to do that and she'll just want to support the pel uh, pubic bone as well. This type of delivery for your placenta takes anything typically between 5 to 20 minutes. The disadvantage is that occasionally you can have a little bit of nausea and vomiting at this point from the injection. Around 10% of ladies may experience that comparing to around 5% of ladies who have the natural delivery of the placenta. Your midwife will um, give you advice on which she thinks is the safest option. So perhaps your preference was for a natural delivery of your placenta, but that something has happened during the pregnancy or the birthing process that we advise that actually it would be safer to have the injection. 
So let us know in your preferences what, what you would like. Once the placenta is delivered, the midwife is going to have a little look at it and check that it all looks intact, and that the membranes, um, the back waters that are around your baby are all intact, and that the cord looks normal. If you're not squeamish, I'd really strongly encourage you to have a little look at the placenta. It's an amazing organ that supported your baby's growth and development for the last nine months. So, you know, feel free to ask the midwife to show it to you and explain to you how, how it's been inside and how it's worked. What happens then is if you don't have a preference to keep the placenta, the placenta then goes into ethical waste and is disposed of by the hospital. It might be your preference that you like to keep your placenta and if you do wish to do that, then just make sure that you've thought about that in packing your bag. Maybe bring a, a freezer bag for it to go in or a Tupperware or something like that. Tupperware is probably a little bit better um, to pop it in. What you might want to do with it then um, you may wish to um, encapsulate it or some ladies might choose to prepare a pate with it. It's a bit like liver pate, so I'm told. Um, other cultures um, believe that the placenta represents new life and they may wish to, um, to plant a tree or another plant on top of it, which is also a really lovely idea. If you don't want to do that, we'll just dispose of it. The midwife will then have a little look down below once the placenta is delivered to see whether there were um, any little tears that need repairing. Um, so she'll just gently have a little look and say, yeah, everything looks fine and there's nothing we need to do. Or actually, yeah, there is a little bit of a tear there, maybe just into the skin or maybe just into the muscle. And it will benefit from having some, some stitches um, to help it heal. If you do need some stitches, we would give some local anaesthetic to numb the area first. It's just going to feel a little bit like a sting as that goes in. And then given time to work, you will just be aware that there's a little bit of pulling or some pressure there, but you're not going to feel sharp and you're not going to feel pain. The stitches are all dissolvable and they will take um, a couple of weeks to, um, to dissolve. It's really important that you keep that area nice and clean and dry. So change your sanitary pad regularly um, to make sure you're well hydrated and got plenty of fibre in your diet. To be um, really mindful of hygiene, so um, to shower the area sort of once twice a day and to keep it nice and clean. Many ladies worry about having their first poo after having stitches and I promise you the anticipation of going is much worse than actually going. And the best thing you can do is keep hydrated, plenty of fibre, not allowing yourself to get constipated and when you feel like you need to go to go and that relief that whew, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be and that all's been okay. Once the stitches are completed the midwife will give you a hand to just freshen up and then hopefully the baby will still be in skin to skin contact with you. We encourage mums to have an uninterrupted um, period of skin to skin around an hour or a little bit longer if needs be until the baby's taken that first feed. So be it that you're planning to breastfeed or even if you've made an informed decision to bottle feed, we would still encourage that uninterrupted skin to skin with mum for the duration of the first feed. After the baby's taken a feed, the midwife will then offer to weigh the baby. Um, many people want to know what the baby weighs. And um, when you make that call to say, baby's arrived and safe, um, then your friends and family tend to want to know all those details. We will also give the baby a top to toe check and we will offer the baby vitamin K. Vitamin K is thought to perhaps either not cross the placenta very well in pregnancy or that the baby doesn't store it as efficiently as an adult would do. And vitamin K is needed for the blood to clot properly. By giving your baby vitamin K, we can reduce the incidence of something called vitamin K deficiency bleeding in newborns from about 1 in 10,000 if we don't give the vitamin K to 1 in 100,000 if we do. There are two different ways we can offer your baby vitamin K, a one-off injection that has no side effects we know of, or a course of oral drops, one at delivery, one at seven days, and then a third dose at around four weeks. What I suggest is I direct you to the NHS Choices website or the HDFT website, and there'll be an information leaflet there guiding you through both choices so you can let us know your preferences. 
After the baby has been uh, checked over, the midwife will then go and make some tea and toast. And believe me, that tea and toast will probably be the best you've ever had before because your body's worked hard and you're ready for some refreshments. And then we're going to give you some time together as a family whilst we go and start processing all the paperwork. Know that at the point the midwife leaves you, we're only at the end of a bell, so if you wish to have the midwife back and to query anything or for any further support, then just let us know and we can come back and see what we can do to support you. The minimum length of time of staying in after your baby's born is six hours post-birth. You may then wish to have what we call an early discharge, where we will try to get the paediatrician to do your baby's first check, which is called the NIPI check, and we will also try to get your baby um, hearing screening. If for some reason the paediatrician or the hearing screeners aren't available, it is still possible to go home, but we would ask you to return to the hospital at some point for those checks. Some of our community midwives are trained in doing the NIPI check, so they may be able to do this at home for you. If you do choose to stay in, we would then transfer you round to our postnatal ward, which is called panel ward. If your baby has passed meconium during the birth process, the minimum length of time for staying in afterwards is 12 hours. The same too for if your waters have been gone for a long period of time, because the midwife will want to do some checks of your baby's temperature, heart rate and breathing rate to be sure that your baby's well with no signs of infection. It could be that you've been on some medication in pregnancy and that you're advised by the paediatricians to stay in for a little bit longer so we can observe your baby to check there's no um, withdrawal from that medication. But if you're planning on breastfeeding your baby, you may wish to stay for anything between um, 6 and 24 hours and get some support with feeding. Please ask for help with each and every feed, even if it's just a case of the midwife coming and saying, yeah, that looks brilliant, does it feel comfortable, everything looks fine. But asking for help with each and every feed means that then you're going home confident that your baby's latching and feeding well.